Hi friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Rachel, how are we doing? Welcome to my September wrap up. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in September, what I thought of them, what I rated them, and yeah, just kind of go over everything with you. So I'm excited. I feel like I had a mostly positive reading month. I also read a few things that were out of my comfort zone and they turned out well. So I'm looking forward to talking about that with you all. So let's get straight into it. All right, so the first book that I read in the month of September, I'm really excited about. I picked this book up kind of randomly. It is a contemporary romance and I just haven't read one of those in a while, but the mood struck and I was like, you know what? I want to read this book. I've had it on my shelves for a while and I've heard amazing things about it. I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about it, but I'm going to be open-minded. And that book is Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. You guys, this is such a stunning romance. I loved it. I gave it five stars. It's one of my new all-time favorite contemporary romances. I thought the relationship dynamic in this book was so well done, so fantastic, and truly like moving. I love this couple. I love them together. I'm getting ahead of myself. If you don't know what this book is about, it is a taboo romance, and the romance focuses on our main character, and she ends up dating her ex-boyfriend's dad. So you know, I didn't really know what I was going to think about that. I wasn't sure, but I've heard so many people say, oh my god, this book is amazing. Try it out. You have to read it, and I'm really glad that I did. I genuinely think that our two main characters, Pike and Jordan, they were made for each other. Like their romance is so beautiful. I really like the way that Penelope Douglas handled the age difference and, you know, obviously the taboo element of that being her ex-boyfriend's dad. It felt very genuine. It felt very sweet. And I just loved the way that the relationship was developed. It felt like slow burn, but not too slow. And I really think that these two are just such a good couple. I was rooting for them the whole time. I loved them. It was steamy. It was romantic. It was fun. And yeah, I gave it five stars. It was such a strong romance. And a really great way to start out the month. The next book that I read in the month of September was Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Queen Sally Rooney. I am a huge fan of Sally Rooney. Absolutely love her. One of my favorite authors of all time. And I have had this book for so long. I've put it on many TBRs. I think I put it on my 22 books to read in 2022. And here I am in September of 2023, including it in a wrap up. So it has taken me a while to pick this book up. I just don't want to live in a world where I don't have a Sally Rooney book to read. Now that I have finished this, I don't know of any other books that she's coming out with. So I think I'm due for a normal people reread honestly but I will say about Beautiful World, Where Are You? This was so good. I was a little bit nervous about this one too, only because I have seen people say that it is very different from her other two books and that they just didn't really love it as much as her other two. And I agree with that, but I also don't. It does very much fit the Sally Rooney literary universe. These characters, they exist amongst Bobby, amongst Marianne and Connell. Like I do feel like this feels like a very classic Sally Rooney book. It's hard to describe what this book is about. It's just following the lives of four people in their 20s as they navigate love, friendship, sex, and politics. And I just absolutely love Sally Rooney's writing style. I loved these characters. I especially really enjoyed Eileen and Simon. Their dynamic was very sweet. It's kind of like this childhood friends to lovers aspect. And I highly recommend picking it up. I will say after reading all three of Sally Rooney's books, I definitely rank her books Normal People at the top. And then this one is second. And then Conversations with Friends is third. I have given them all five stars though. They're all fantastic. And I just think that she is a genius and a god and I love her so much. I'm really, really happy that I picked this up and especially happy that I loved it so much. The next book that I read in the month of September was Golden Sun by Pierce Brown. So this is the second book in the Red Rising trilogy and it was so good as I knew it would be. I will say though, in the very beginning of this book, it was a little like touch and go for me. I was a little bit worried. Just the pacing in the beginning was a little bit off for me. I don't know what it was, but I just kind of had trouble finding a rhythm with this book. But I will say, honestly, once we got to like the 30 or 40% mark, I was in it. I was really excited and I loved the second half of this book in particular. Really intense, really high stakes constantly. I love the feeling of dread that I get when I read Pierce Brown's books, but truly like it's this thrilling, dreadful feeling, and you just do not know what our main character Darrow, and honestly, a lot of the side characters, what they are going to end up doing, and how are they gonna get out of the situations that they're in. And I will say, this ending is horrific in a great way, but you know, you know if you've read this book, I am very, very excited to pick up the third book, Morning Star. And I think that this was a really solid installment in the Red Rising series. I gave this book four stars. It's just not that perfect five star for me. And I think that's just because in the beginning, the pacing was just off to me. I was just not really understanding where the plot was going, but then kind of once things kind of started coming together, storylines started weaving together, I was in and I was fully hooked. So I did super love this book. I am really excited to pick up Morning Star. I'm gonna try to read that next month. And I think that that will complete the Red Rising trilogy and then from my understanding, the other books are like spinoffs or continuations. I'm not really sure. If any of you have read these books, if you could like in a non-spoilery way, let me know. Is Morningstar like the finale? And then the other books are like 
something else. I don't want to look it up because I'm terrified of spoiling myself because I have done that before. Sometimes the most innocent searches about a book end up completely spoiling you. And I've had that happen to me many times. So I'm very excited to read Morningstar, which I do think is the finale, but I'm curious what the other books are about and kind of what direction they go in. So if anyone wants to let me know, that would be fantastic. But yeah, this was a very strong book and a really great four star read. All right. And then I continued on with my Throne of Glass reread and I read Queen of Shadows. What can be said about Queen of Shadows that I have not already said multiple times on this channel? I love it. It's my favorite book in the Throne of Glass series. I feel like it is such a pivotal book in the Throne of Glass series and it's just nonstop fun and action for me. I love it. I really love a lot of the development that happens for our characters in this book. I love the tragedies. I love the wins. I love everything. This book has a lot of impactful moments that really affect further things that go on in the series and it's just a really, really strong book to me and it just stands out as the crown jewel of the Throne of Glass series. So really, really happy to read this. This was my third time reading this book and it was of course a five star. All right. And then I did do a little impromptu buddy read with my friend Hannah at Hannah's Recent Reads. We picked up The Assistant to the Villain. We had seen a lot of buzz about this book and it was marketed as Once Upon a Time meets The Office and it's kind of like a fantasy romance. So it sounded very cute to us. So we both decided to pick it up. I will say overall though, I thought that this book was fine. It was average. It exists. It is in fact a book, but it was a three star read for me. In this book, we follow our main character. She's looking for a job and she ends up getting a job as the assistant to the villain. And in this, you know, fantasy kingdom, he's just known as the villain and she is his assistant, like an office assistant, as he does what villains do. And while I do think there were definitely some cute elements of this book, there were a few scenes that definitely made me smile, made me laugh. Overall, this book just felt a little like YA, immature in a way that just didn't really work for me. I was never really blown away by anything that was happening in this book. I thought that it was like cute. I thought that it was fine. It was a pleasant read, but it just did not stick out to me as something that is super fantastic. And our main character did just feel a little bit immature to me at times. So this was a three star. All right, so then I did a little 24 hour readathon and it was a very successful 24 hour readathon. If you've watched that vlog, I read the most that I have in a 24 hour time period and it was really great. So let's talk about those books. Number one, I read None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell, which is an adult thriller. Very shocking to see an adult thriller pop up on a wrap up of mine, but I just heard a lot of people talking about it. I heard really, really great raving five-star reviews of this book and the premise of the story really intrigued me and I hadn't picked up an adult thriller in a bit. I just don't do it that frequently. So I gave it a shot and I have to say, this book was awesome. This book was so, so good. I really, really loved the premise of this book. I loved the writing. I loved the twists and turns. This book, once again, gave me such a sense of dread, but in a really fantastic way. This book really made me feel things. This book made me question my opinions of characters and my judgment of them. And I am left leaving this book not really really knowing what happened, not really knowing what is true. The title of the book is None of This Is True, but I'm like, but there's gotta be something in here that is true. And genuinely, I don't know how I feel after that ending. The ending was super, super crazy. If you don't know what this book is about, it follows two characters who meet at a restaurant. They're both celebrating their 45th birthday and they meet in the bathroom and they're talking and they're like, oh, hey, it's both of our birthdays today. We're birthday twins. They also find out that they live in the same general area and they were both born in the same hospital. So very weird coincidences. One of the characters is a very successful podcaster. She is also very wealthy and just lives a very like picturesque life. And then our other main character, she's not happy in her life and she really wants to make a change. She finds out that our other character runs a podcast that interviews very successful women who have come from darker places, but have pulled themselves out and made themselves success stories. And so this character wants to be on the podcast because she says that she is about to change her life. She is about to make some really big changes. And she asks the podcaster to kind of document that as their friendship forms. It turns into the most twisty, obsessed, grotesque, just, disturbing story after that and things go completely off the rails and I loved it. I gave this book four stars and it was really, really good. 10 out of 10 recommend. I absolutely loved it. All right. And then I picked up Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. This is a kind of like historical fantasy romance. This was so cute. Oh my God, you guys, this is Bridgerton meets Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies with a dash of the cruel prince. And I just thought the vibes were really great. Our characters were really wonderful and I really liked the romance. In this book, our main character gets cursed by an elf when she is very young. So she grows up with Half a soul because the elf took the other half. And once we get to present day, she is living with her cousin and her cousin is entering society, trying to find a husband. And so she accompanies her cousin for those events. And along the way, she meets a guy named Lord Sorcerer. And Lord Sorcerer actually has some information and some knowledge on elves and fae and fairies. And so he offers to help her out and a romance forms between them. And it's so sweet. And I just really, really liked the writing. It's super cute. It's super quick. It's like a 220 ish page story, but I do think that the romance is well-developed for that short amount of time. So I really, really loved this. Oh, and this was four stars if I did not say. Then I picked up How the 
King of Elfame, Learn to Hate Stories. This is a short story collection following King Carden Greenbrier. I love him to death. I would die for him. And this book is meant to be read after you have completed the Folk of the Air series. It kind of just gives you a peek at Carden's life before the events of the Folk of the Air, some stories that were intermixed during the time of the Folk of the Air, and then as well as some after. And I really, really loved it. I love Holly Black's writing. I love the Folk of the Air series. This was such a joy. Carden is such a compelling character. He is one of those characters that I read the Folk of the Air series like over a year ago, and I feel so far removed from those books now, but I do think about him a lot. I think he's a very impactful character, very well written, and Jude and Carden are the best enemies to lovers that I have ever read. So reading this was very fun. It's kind of just like a little fairy tale book, but I really liked it in kind of getting more information on Carden and his backstory for sure, and just some moments of Carden and Jude being very domestic, which was really cute. The next book that I read was Mountains Made of Glass by Scarlet St. Clair. This is a fantasy romance spicy novella. I think it's going to be the first book in a series of fairy tale retellings as well. And this book was really cute. It starts off with our main character. She lives in a village that is very cursed. And each day a member of the village has to try their hand at breaking one of the curses. And she has to kill a frog because this frog is in a well. And I think they think that if she kills the frog, the well will be fixed and everything will be great. She does end up killing the frog. But what she doesn't realize was that was an elven prince in like a froggy shifter form. And his five brothers, come for her in the middle of the night and are like, hey, you killed an elven prince. You are now basically indebted to us and you have to go and live with one of our other brothers in his fairy tale world for the rest of your life. So it's kind of like a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's a light Beauty and the Beast retelling, I would say, but our main character has no choice. She has to go off to this kingdom and stay with the Thorn Prince. And it's this really beautiful, like mossy green vines on the wall, just absolutely stunning kingdom that she has to be in. But obviously she doesn't want to be here. She wants to go home, but slowly she starts to fall in love with the Thorn Prince. And it's a spicy novella, so it was very steamy and very fun. And I will say my favorite part of this book was the imagery. I just thought the way that Scarlet St. Clair described this kingdom, described the different magical creatures. It was really beautiful and really well done. I really liked it. I gave it three stars. There were moments where I was considering giving it four stars, especially in the first half. But I will say in the second half, there were just a few plot lines that were a little bit cringy to me. I rolled my eyes a couple times, but overall I did really enjoy this book. And I think if you're just looking for like a fun, spicy fan row that you're going to be able to finish in just like a couple hours, I would recommend this book. All right. And the final Final book that I read in the month of September was A Broken Blade by Melissa Blair. We are unfortunately ending this wrap up on a bit of a disappointment. I did not dislike this book, but I just don't feel like this book really sticks out to me very much. This book is a Robin Hood retelling and our main character, she is kind of like the main assassin for this very evil king. And she has to go and find this shadow who is a big threat to the kingdom, but she goes on a quest and on a journey to find him. And as she is doing that, she starts to learn a lot more about who the enemies are, who the kingdom that she works for is, and kind of who is the bad guy. This book is described as a fantasy romance, but I do know some people who have read this and said the romance isn't really that much at the forefront, so just kind of a warning. And so I did know that going in, but I will say I just don't think that the romance, even though it's not a fan row, I just don't think that the romance was really well developed or well done at all. I have read some fantasies that have romance subplots, which is what I would call this book, that still have really great romances, like One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. That is not a fantasy romance, but the romance is still very well well done. It's definitely a subplot, but it is well done and it keeps you interested. My biggest thing was I just don't really feel like our two main characters have very good chemistry. I just didn't really feel anything between them. And that's obviously very disappointing. And overall, the story was fine. It was good. I do like the Robin Hood retelling aspect. That is a story that I really enjoy, but I wasn't blown away by the way that it was done in this book. So this ended up being a three star read for me. Definitely not bad, but just not very memorable. All right, friends. So those are all of the books that I read in the month of September. I would love to know down in the comments what was the best book that you read in the month of September. And if you made it to this point in the video, go ahead and leave the ghost emoji because we are officially entering a spooky season. Please make sure that you're following me on Instagram and Goodreads. They are always linked down below. I super appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. I love you all so, so, so much. And I will catch you guys in the next one.